it, it's just nice to see, you know, the the Mr. Robot example and you actually doing it and showing, you know, is it re- is it real or is it just a, a movie scene? And it's nice to see you, you know, actually showing us how to do it. And today is going to be among the most advanced, the most complex hacks that we saw in Mr. Robot and maybe also maybe the most valuable <laughs> in that and that we're going to be looking at essentially creating a mobile spy machine. Hey everyone, David Bombal back with Occupy the Web. If you haven't seen our previous videos, he's the author of this book, Linux Basics for Hackers. Fantastic book if you want to learn Linux, uh, but also from a hacker's perspective. And he's also the author of this book, Getting Started, Becoming a Master Hacker. Occupy the Web, welcome. It's good to be back again, David. It's always great to be talking to you and talking about hacking. I love this, this effort of trying to explain you know, the Mr. Robot hack. So let's do another one today. And and today is going to be among the most advanced, the most complex hacks that we saw in Mr. Robot. And maybe also maybe the most valuable <laughs> yep. in that, and that we're going to be looking at essentially creating a mobile spy machine. I love that. So, so I mean, you've kind of mentioned it offline and I don't want to jump the gun. So is, is, which episode are we talking about? This is, a, this is season two. I think it's episode five. I'm pretty sure it is episode five. They talk about it in episode four. They do it in episode five. And this is, well, you know, we know that Elliot has taken down Evil Corp, right? Him and F Society have taken down Evil Corp. And we have this kind of chaos in the global economy, right? And we have we've now have lots of things going on, including the Chinese are now involved and we have the FBI's involved. FBI is actually in China. We have the, the female uh, FBI agent. What's her name? Um, DePiro, I think is her name. Dom DePiro is her name. Uh, Dom DePiro is in China. She's meeting with uh, the Chinese. The FBI are on the trail of Elliot and his whole gang. I mean, you know, they're they're kind of freaking out. They're getting paranoid. They realize that, you know, it, their FBI are not very far behind. And so they've got to come up with a plan to be able to find out what the FBI know, because everybody is getting paranoid, thinking that they're going to be arrested soon for the 5-9 hack. And so they come up with this plan to be able to spy on the FBI. In the first part, we learned that the FBI has switched okay, to Android phones. Okay, that's the first step. That comes up in episode four. <laughs> all right? And then in episode five, we see Elliot is, begins to develop some exploits. But he has to have a way to be able to deliver the exploits. And so what he comes up with is to basically create a mini cell tower that he's going to place inside of Evil Corp. And Angela, who's now working for Evil Corp, she can walk in, apparently, and place <laughs> it in, <laughs> apparently, I, that's kind of a big if, right? But uh, and place it in the uh, Evil Corp to be able to pick up the cell um, signals from uh, the FBI. And of course, then also implant some malware. So what we're talking about here is what's called a femto cell. This is a femto cell. These are a couple of femto cells, and these are the ones that are actually used in the show. And I have I have this one right here. I bought this one a few years ago. This is the new, you can see this, of course, right? Yeah, yep. Okay, okay. So what these are is that all of the cell companies, no matter where you're at around the world, they sell what are called network extenders. These are for people who live in areas where there is not good cell service. So you put one of these in your home, you put one of these in your office, if you don't have good cell service, maybe it's a dead zone. And essentially what it does is it works as a cell tower within your home or office. Now we know, maybe not, but we do (laughs) that your cell phone will connect to the closest and strongest cell signal. And so essentially what these are, by putting one of these in somebody's home or office, you're going to, they're going to connect to this femto cell and kind of give you a diagram of what it looks like in somebody's home. It's like, so here's the the femto cell in somebody's home. They got a cell phone. It's an old style flip phone there. It's kind of an old diagram. And then the femto cell connects to broadband access into the internet. Okay. And then connects to the cell network. Right. So it is essentially intercepting the cell signal 
and putting it across the internet into the cell, um, the cellular network. All right, so it goes through the internet into the cellular network. So, can I ask you—is this similar to the Stingray type thing that the? Because that's the one you always you always hear about, like the police or whatever, FBI, whatever, using the Stingray, uh, ISMI catcher type things, right? Exactly. So essentially, what this is is that it's a mini Stingray. All right, it's a mini Stingray. Whereas a Stingray can capture signals for you know a large distance so I mean, you can put one in a neighborhood and it'll pick up yeah. all the cell signals in that neighborhood and the fbi and others law enforcement use them and it's only legal for law enforcement to actually have one it's not legal for anybody else to have one i will put out there that at hackers arise we're working on building one with a software defined radio so that's part of our project wow. okay? so we'll you see tell that you, you, know, you better you better come on the show when when you when you've got that ready sorry to interrupt well it's it's pretty much ready okay it's not it's not something we're not inventing it okay we're yeah. building it because it's already been invented but you can go ahead and use a software defined radio to make a stingray now it's illegal to have, actually own one a stingray We'll we'll put this up on your uh, on your channel. We'll put it up on Hackers Rise in the in the future. But a femtocell is legal, right? A femtocell is legal, so that's 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 a good thing. Femtocell is legal, right? So this is being sold from the largest carrier in the U.S., yeah. which is Verizon. They sell them on their website. This is coming right off their website, very similar to the one that I have. I bought mine off eBay for I think one hundred and twenty dollars um, a few years ago. And people sell them on eBay because they, they bring them home and they don't want them or don't need them and they put them up on eBay. New, they cost between $250 to $300. And it's a legal device that the carriers and all the carriers sell them, but they're all slightly different. So what I'm showing you here today is going to apply in general to all of them, but specifics are going to be very different. So every carrier has their own. Notice you can see here the, the Samsung logo logo right here. I don't know if you can yep. see that in the screen. Yeah. So these are made by Samsung. Verizon makes the Samsung. Other carriers use other manufacturers, okay, to make these. And what these are is just a mini cell tower. The key on this mini cell tower is to be able to get inside of it. <laughs> because if we can get if we can get inside of it, then in essence, we can eavesdrop and do a man in the middle on all the traffic that goes through it. And that's essentially what Elliot's doing in the show. All right. So we see him, he's developing an exploit, but what he's doing is he's going to put that exploit into the femto cell. So the, the, the first step to getting inside the femto cell is that I have one here and I've taken some pictures okay, to show you. The first step is you'll you look down at the bottom right here. Well, I'm going to back up a little bit. Okay, so there's both enterprise level femto cells and there's consumer level femto cells. All right, so we're looking okay. at consumer, consumer level. It's actually a little bit easier to hack the enterprise <laughs> level femto cells on the consumer level, which are cheap ones, right? That's what we're talking about here. Here's There's a, a connection down below in the bottom of these things right here. And what's that look like? Can you see it? You see what kind of connection? Yeah, I can is? see it, yep. What does it look like? I can't see, I can't see clearly. Is it like RJ45 or is no. it like a screen? I mean, I mean, look at it. I'm going to bring it a little closer. You're you testing it? it. I'm not sure. I can see oh, it. Oh, you can't see it? Okay. It's an, it's an, H, it's an HDMI connection. Oh, I thought it might be. Yep. Well, yeah, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pretend that I knew what it was. Uh, okay. is, is it HDMI? <laughs> yes, it's an HDMI, exactly. <laughs> but, but what can we do with an HDMI? I mean, this is, this is what's really puzzling when you see this. You go, what can I do with this HDMI connection here, right? Yeah. It, it turns out that the Samsung and, and Verizon have a specially made cable that is essentially USB on one end and HDMI on the other end. Oh, but wow. You can't, yeah, because I mean, you, HDMI, you would think it's just a monitor. Why would you want a screen connected to it, such a device? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But they've developed their own unique and proprietary cables to be able to get inside of these things. Right? But it's not that hard to make your own. <laughs> and, <laughs> And so that's what we're going to do next. Right? So this is basically, I'm looking at the bottom side under here on that last picture. So what we need to do is that we can go out, 
okay, and get, this is actually, I bought this one, I think off Amazon. And what we can do is by using an HDMI cable and this cable, it's called a FTDI PTL. 232R. And then we can take this cable. So if you want to buy one, they're about anywhere from about seven or eight dollars to fifteen dollars in that area. And they're not that expensive. And so what we can do is we can splice these two cables together, the HDMI cable and this cable. And this is the wiring for it. You take the HDMI bare copper ground to the FD FTDI black. There's the FTDI black right there. And the HDMI white to the FTDI yellow and the HDMI orange to the FTDI orange okay how did you work this out was this just like trial and error or did you find the specification somewhere i found specifications for it <laughs> wow so, so well i'm not the, i'm not the first one to do this <laughs> and so this actually comes from a, a hack that was developed and was uh, first uh, presented at Black Hat in like uh, 2011. I think it was 2011. And so, but the specifications, they didn't give these specifications for the cables at Black Hat. So I had to go digging around some of the manuals for these Bento cells to find out what the cabling was like. So anyways, once you have this cable, then you can access the console inside the Fento cell. So the first step is we got to build the cable. That's the first step. Right. Got to build the yep. cable that gives us a proprietary access to the Femto cell through that HDMI port. That's step number one. And we're far from done because when we get inside the Femto cell, essentially we have a very small Linux kernel. Okay. It's called Monta Linux. Some of you may have heard of it before. It's used in a lot of IoT devices. So it's a it's a company out of um, California that makes these really small Linux kernels put in all kinds of devices. And so that's what's inside the Fento cell. But you'll find, you know, if you'll find Monta Linux in, in all kinds of IoT devices, no matter what you whether it be a router or baby monitor, what have you, these all use very small Linux. And so this is once a Again, I'm going to plug learning Linux if you want to be a hacker, right? So now let's see which book, which book should they, which book should you read? Yeah. <laughs> but there's so, more. But there's more. Yes. So you know that book. We're really looking at Linux as how to use it as an attack tool. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, is that all these IoT devices are also have Linux. So yeah. you get inside one of these devices, and if you don't know Linux, you, you can't find your way around, right? You don't exactly. know how to get find anything, what to do with it. You need to know Linux to be able to do this. It ends yeah, up Linux is this- like is like speaking uh, speaking English, let's say in the US or the UK. It's like a, a basic <laughs> skill that you have to have these days in IT. I think. I agree. I agree. It's a basic skill you have to have. So once you're inside, now you've got this Monta Linux, but it doesn't have a Bash shell. <laughs> so it's not like what we're accustomed to, right? And yeah. so it becomes pretty hard to work with. Once again, this is a pretty complex hack, but it can be done. So it's just nice to see, you know, because you sorry to interrupt again. It, it's just nice to see, you know, the the Mr. Robot example and you actually doing it and showing, you know, is it re- is it real or is it just a, a movie scene? And it's nice to see you, you know, actually showing us how to do it. It's it's real, but it's not easy. Right. And yep. that's once yep. again, we've always talked about Mr. Robot in the time frame that he works yeah. in. And this one, you know, if they were already familiar, one of the team was already familiar with it. Yeah, it, it, it might be able to be get done in a couple of few days that they had, but it's not easy. Right. So once we're inside, we've got the console, we've got to get root access. And so here's the two models that Verizon uses. And these are two methods to escalate privileges to get to root. So the one I have is this one right here, which is the easier one. And Verizon now says that they no longer this no longer works, but it doesn't matter because we can just go buy the old ones that have never yeah. been updated off you know, eBay or any place and get root access. And so once we got root access on these things, right? So we we now are in, you know, we've got root access on the yep. Linux inside this device. Unfortunately, even with root access, there's not, it's not really functional. We can't do a whole lot with it. And so if you watch closely on Mr. Robot, you'll see that this comes up. This is, see the screen right here? This is yep. open WRT. These are Linux images that can be used on IoT devices. So if you've got some hardware, you can go ahead and download the Linux to install and flash 
uh, into the IoT device. Here's all the hardware that they, this has been going on for years, and very few people are familiar with it. Now you can just download the, the software. It's open source software for a particular device, for any device. And this is what they do is that basically they take this femto cell and now they go ahead and flash it with a Linux operating system that they have developed themselves. Or they've basically taken the image from here and made some alterations to it. The show, what happens is that Elliot actually puts some malware. He puts malware, you know, it's kind of a well-known browser RCE exploit into the femto cell that would then put the, the shell code onto the phones. What I'm most interested in from this perspective is being able to eavesdrop on the traffic. So we don't need to actually have an RCE. We don't need to have any exploit at all to be able to listen in and watch the traffic. So Elliot is trying to infect the phones, but to be yep. able to listen in, it's there's still a few things that we need to do. You can see all of the data traffic, okay? It all goes unencrypted, but the SMS traffic and the phone traffic, you have to be able to decode that traffic because it's all encoded, but it that, that's yeah. publicly available information that you can decode. And it's really kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here today. I'm just trying to give you the outlines of what can be done to be able to build essentially a small spy device, a mini stingray that gives you access to all of the mobile traffic in the area. Now, these stingrays are kind of low power, so the, the target has to be within 15 feet of the stingray, or stingray, the femto cell, to be able to connect to it, but they can then travel within 50 feet of the femto cell, and you can still, they'll still be connected to that femto cell. So, the initial connection has to be within about 15 feet. So what is that? About five meters and then about 17, 16 meters uh, in that range. They all, they travel throughout the room or the office. Uh, you can pick up all of their traffic. So it's kind of a, giving you the kind of the bare outlines of what we have to do, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of work involved here. You know, probably, you know, the, the first step of course is getting that cable made so you can get access to the device and then you have to go ahead and flash it you've got root access and then you got to flash it with a new linux kernel right? and then once you have new linux kernel then you you have you have access to all of the traffic that's going over the device but i mean if you put that in the ceiling or, or like he did like they hid it in a in a storeroom or something didn't they and then it, it then he, the distance is fine yeah he put it in the floor in the show there's a scene where angela puts it on the floor and connects it into the ethernet cable there yeah but you know it's still it's kind of a large device it's probably you know it's well not it's not that large it's the size of um, a small purse okay but it's you know if you if it's set on the floor next to other electronic devices that may be, you know, people may not notice it, but it's not, you know, so small like a Raspberry Pi that is yeah. basically people are not going to see it. But, you know, one of the things that I wanted to point out is this open WRT project, which, you know, I don't think many people are familiar with it in that you can go ahead and get open source firmware for just about any IoT device, right? And then if you have your own firmware, of course, then you can make your own edits to it and have it do just about anything that you want. And that's what Elliot does in, in the show, is that he goes and downloads firmware. And much of this is Monta Linux for various different devices. You can see it here. Here's some of the Cisco devices here. And some like you said, that's quite a complex thing because you'd have to connect to that uh, cell and then flash it basically, and then somehow capture the traffic going through it. Yeah, and so the the hardest part once you once you got the cable, then you got to go and flash it. Okay, you got to get root access, then flash it, and then you got to go ahead and figure out what the the codecs are for the SMS and the voice traffic across it. I'll also point out that on the enterprise, okay, on the enterprise level of these femto cells, they're actually a little bit easier because they have a standard connection. Mm -hmm. To connect to the enterprise level, it's simply a um, Ethernet connection, right? Oh, that's and much easier, yeah. Yeah, much easier. And then the, the, 
root password on it is femto cell and then xxx four x's four so it's you're good. femto cell okay a capital f the capital c and then the last four digits of the serial number on the device right so those are the, the keys are being able to connect into the device then get root access okay on the enterprise level one it's 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 a, the default password is Publix, where the X's represent the last four digits of the serial number of the device. For these consumer level ones, it's a little more difficult. And as I said earlier, is that Verizon has said they've now closed this vulnerability. The vulnerability that they've closed is that the ease of getting the uh, root password. But like I said, there's always a way to get to escalate privileges, right? So this is basically a privilege escalation issue, and it's going to differ from device to device. So, you know, this applies to these Samsung devices that Verizon uses that I have and are used on the show. But if you're, you know, if you're in, in the UK, if you're in Germany, if you're in China, they're all going to be using, and different carriers are going to be using different femto cells. So, but the process is still going to be the same. One, get yourself into the, the console. In our case here, we had to build a special cable to get ourselves into the console. Then once you're inside the console, then get root privileges. And then three, you have to go ahead and flash it with a, a more complete uh, Linux operating system. And then once you have that inside the system, then you can go ahead and put in something like TCP dump or Wireshark and watch the traffic. You can watch the data traffic from there without having to do anything further. But as far as the SMS traffic, and the voice traffic, it has to be, you have to find the proper codecs that that particular company is using to be able to decode the SMS traffic and the, vo and the voice traffic. It's a complex task. You know, if you, if, if you build one, you've got yourself a really cool spy tool, okay, that you can use. And like Elliot did, I mean, Elliot used it both. Remember, he listened into the FBI conversations and he also hacked their phones with it because he used as their traffic is going through the femto cells, he's sending an exploit to their phones and taking control of their phones. But you don't have to take control of the phones. You can just simply listen in on all the traffic, both the data traffic, the SMS traffic and the voice traffic. Essentially, you're taking control of the femto cell. What they showed in Mr. Robot is once again realistic, but like you always say, it's the time frames, right, that are not realistic. Yeah, this is, it's very realistic. It's been done. Um, there's a lot of research into these uh, devices. Some of that research has been published. You can find the research and be able to do it yourself, but it's time consuming, but somebody's already done it. And so it can be done. Um, the guys who originally did this at Black Hat were um, ISEC partners did it, uh, and they did it like 2011. So this would have been available to Elliot when the show was made in 2014, yeah. 2015. So he would have had this kind of research already available to him to be able to hack the femto cell. And it was also was a, in the show that shows that he is actually using, he's building a, a browser exploit that was well known at that time. It came out like in 2014 that he's building in the show a, in Ruby. If you watch closely, he's, he's building an exploit in Ruby to be able to put into the femto cell to then be able to place the exploit onto everybody's phone who connects to it. That's great. And I mean, the device that you're building, is that using like HackRF or some kind of software-defined radio like that? Well, the, the device that we're working on is actually a Stingray, right? A Stingray-like device that actually is using Lime SDR, right? So the HackRF is a nice piece of hardware that can do a lot of things, but it can only go, it's only half duplex, okay? So yeah. it can't go in both directions. It also is relatively slow, it's half duplex. It only uses USB 2, not USB 3, and it's relatively slow. So we're building with a Lime SDR, which is a lot faster. It's full duplex. It can go USB 3, what have you. So it has a lot of the capabilities, basically enhanced capabilities of like the HackRF. The HackRF is a nice hobbyist and a learning tool. But when you start getting into like serious projects, you got to take a bump up to these little bit more powerful pieces of hardware and a little bit more expensive. 
I like to ask the sort of the beginner questions or the dumb questions, for lack of a better word. The femtocell is connecting, uh, sorry, it's using cell phone uh, frequencies. So the phone connects via typical cell phone connections to the femtocell. And then it's so connecting this, via IP. Yeah, sorry, go on. Right, exactly. So here's, here's the, you have the cell phone. It's connecting to the femtocell. The femtocell then via ethernet is connecting to the broadband gateway. The gateway then is going via IP Okay, out to the internet to the radio network controller and the whole network of the the uh, mobile carrier. Now the the backhaul on these femto cells is varying. Some of them are private networks, and some of them simply use the public internet. So it, it varies by carrier, but it, really it's not that important to us because what we're doing is we're intercepting right here. At this, at this stage right here, we're inside this device. But there are some people who've worked on trying to intercept this traffic in here. And of course, the when we start talking about building a Stingray, essentially what we're doing is building this, this whole tower right here with the BTS. They call the macro cell BTS. You're building a cell tower with a, an entire cell phone transmission unit. My question was, couldn't you run a sniffer between the femtocell and the gateway, like in that diagram. So it's got broadband access. Could you like sniff the traffic or is it all encrypted? Well, it's all encrypted from here to here. So that's what, okay. actually, it, that's that's part of the problem that you run into is that one, this is all encrypted. And so you have to get it, you have to intercept the traffic before it gets before encrypted. It gets yeah. encrypted. Yeah. And so yeah, that's the whole, that's why you need to go ahead and change the the Linux kernel inside that device. Because as it's built, it's encrypting it as soon as it hits the, the kernel and you can't get it before it gets encrypted. So that's why Elliot changes the kernel. Okay, that's why he uses OpenWRT to change the Linux kernel before it gets encrypted. And then once he has that, he can see all the traffic. It's interesting in the UK, I don't know if it's the same in the US, in the UK carriers allow you to make calls on your Wi-Fi. So if, you, if you've got no cell phone reception, but like your home broadband is there, it'll just jump onto the home broadband. broadband. So you just right. make calls and receive calls on on your Wi-Fi. Is it similar in the US? Yeah, in the US you can do, you can make a, you can make calls on the Wi-Fi here as well. So the same problem there, if it, the, the traffic's encrypted, that's why you can't sniff it, right? Yeah, the traffic's encrypted there. So they're, they're mostly in most of the carriers now, especially when you get to 4G, when you're talking about 2G and 3G, the authentication and encryption is very weak. Right? When you get to 4G okay. and 5G, it gets much stronger and it's harder to break. Actually, these femto cells are using 3G. So they're a little bit slower than regular traffic, but this is, a, this is for people who don't have any traffic in their area. If you're no cell in their area, if you're making phone calls, wouldn't even notice the difference between 3G yeah. and 4G, but it's only when you're sending you know, you're sending data traffic through that you'll notice the difference. But for regular cell calls, you won't notice the difference at all. You know, I think I I, I kind of missed it, so I think we should emphasize that you, if you, with that femto cell, you can uh, eavesdrop on SMSs, it's typical like Sally of phone calls, but also the internet traffic that would typically go across like 4G or 3G. Is that right? Yes. So you can get the, the internet traffic is unencrypted at the Fento cell. The SMS is encrypted, but it can be decrypted. And the voice traffic can be uh, decrypted as well. And this was demonstrated, like you said, at Black Hat 2011, right? I think it was uh, first shown. There's been a number of researchers who have worked on it. The folks at ISEC Partners demonstrated it at Black Hat 2011, and then somebody else did it in 2010. And then there's been a, a number of researchers who have continued this research in recent years. Uh, there's a fellow in China who's been doing, you know, he's been tearing apart all these femto cells around the world. And and basically he says, they're all, they're all vulnerable to being hacked, right? And so, well. but... The hack is going to be different via, depending on what femto cell you're using. This is we're just in this case we're just talking about this one. That's probably the most widely used in the United States. You know, Verizon has about one third of all the, the mobile customers in the U.S. And this is the product that they're still selling that they use for people who are, are in dead zones of cellular the cellular network. And the new ones, they say that you can't get root access. So if you can't get root access, you can't obviously flash 
the the Linux kernel, you know, there's always a way, right? There's always a way. You, <laughs> there's always a way. So they've made it harder, but there's still always a way. And then, you know, how you're going to get root access on the others is going to vary by the 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 company who manufactures it and the carrier who's carrying it. So we weren't able to show everything here. Do you have, I, know you, I always ask the question because you've always got these amazing courses. Have you, have you got a course on this or are you covering some of this in your courses? I don't have a course on it, but I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, put at least a tutorial up on Hackers Rise on all the steps. Um, I have to look, be, great. be Yeah, I have to be a little bit careful on this one. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so I'm still trying to decide the, the whole Stingray thing being illegal. It, puts me in kind of legal jeopardy there. Yeah. This one yeah. is actually a legal device that is being hacked. It's something that I, I'm i considering doing and putting it up on uh, Hackers Rise on how to do it. Um, but I've got one here that's very vulnerable. I bought it about three years ago off eBay, and, and uh, it's relatively easy to hack. Relatively that's brilliant. Easy, meaning, meaning it <laughs> takes, you know, two or three days of work. <laughs> For you, not, not for 30, us, but for you. Not for, not for 30 seconds. Okay, by the way, I really want to thank you for sharing your knowledge. And I have to say this, yeah, it would take you two days, but for the rest of us, it might take a lot, lot longer than that. But thank you for, you know, sharing your knowledge, but also like talking about like how realistic Mr. Robot is and, you know, why you enjoy it. For everyone who's watching, um, put below what you'd like us to cover. We've been uh, reading the comments, so we've been seeing the, the kind of things that you've been asking for. And hopefully we're kind of covering the most popular topics. Uh, but Put your comments below. Let us know what you want to cover. Occupy the web. As always, thanks so much. Okay, thanks, David.